Hello and welcome to this guide on how to land on Duna in Kerbal Space Program 2. So as you can see, we already have our rocket in orbit around Duna. This is from my Saturn V build, however it does have a few small modifications such as the solar panels and there's also some solar panels on the lander as well as some parachutes just so we can get to Duna and back safely. Now, as with my lunar landing guide, this isn't necessarily the most accurate way to get down. However, I've found that it's one of the easier ways to just get on the surface nice and safely while using as little fuel as possible. So, we'll get straight into the guide. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to decouple the command and service module from the lander. And then we can use RCS just to pull our, push ourselves away a little bit. Then, the next thing we'll do is we will use square bracket on our keyboard and right click on the command module's docking port and then if we set that as the target activate SAS and hit the target button on the SAS control bar that will line our lander up with the command module and then we're just going to do the same thing with the command module to the lander as well And now that's done, it just means that the two docking ports will remain pointed directly at one another. So we're going to reactivate RCS, we're also going to change the velocity bug to target just so we can see how our approach speed is doing. And then we're going to boost forward to around about 2 or 3 meters per second. And you can see the stack separator is a little bit in the way at the moment, so I think what I'll do is I will orient the command module and then I'm just going to boost downwards a little bit as well just to get us going below it. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to make much difference but we should knock that out of the way. There we go. So now we're docked. Ordinarily what we might do is we might use the main engine to deorbit the big tank. Um, and then use the little engine on the command module to actually reorbit the stack once we've decoupled that. However, I personally don't like doing that because it feels like a bit of a waste of fuel. And also, as you can see, the big tank actually has more than half a tank left. So you may have noticed we have some solar panels and an antenna. And the reason for that is we're actually going to leave this in orbit as a kind of first module of a modular space station for future missions and possibly even for refueling. So we will decouple that from the lander and um, command module. We will just hit SAS just to make sure it doesn't go spinning wildly out of control. And like I say, we'll leave that in orbit for future missions. So We'll go back to the lander and command module. And now we want to move our kerbals from the command module into the lander. So to do that, you hit this little symbol on the app bar, you go to the kerbal manager, and then you can just move two of your kerbals into the lander. And now that's done, we can now decouple the lander from the command module. So now we are ready to create our deorbit maneuver. So if we go to the map, uh, I'm not that one. I'm not 100% knowledgeable on the different types of terrain on Duna, so I don't know which bits flat and which bits aren't. However, what we're going to do is we're just going to try and aim somewhere on the light side of the planet. So how I do that is I would line the sun up at the top of Duna, and then we can place our maneuver node right at the back and then if as usual we look down we can pull inwards on the prograde arrow and we're aiming to get our periapsis for around about 25,000 meters and uh, the reason for this is Duna's atmosphere starts at 50,000 however it's very thin so as you enter you don't get a huge amount of aero braking effect so we go down to 25 just to make sure that it will actually get us down onto the surface if you go much higher than that and you end up skipping straight through, then just keep orbiting until the aero braking effect has brought you, brought your periapsis down. So now that's set, we are going to quick save 
just in case something goes wrong. And then we're going to point our lander at the manoeuvre marker on the nav ball using the manoeuvre node or the manoeuvre button on the SAS control bar. And once that's stabilised, we can warp to the manoeuvre. And then, because we haven't used this engine yet, we're going to use Z on our keyboards to go to full throttle. And once the timer hits zero, we will stage the engine. This is only a short burn, so it won't take very long to get down to the desired altitude. So now we're actually around 24,000, which isn't uh, too bad. As long as we don't go too much lower, then we shouldn't have any like major reheating issues. Although, at, in this current version of Early Access, the reheating effects aren't currently um, available. However, in the future, it's just best to try and make sure that you don't go into the atmosphere too fast. So now that's set, we can go back to the um, flight view. And now we can fast forward until we reach Juno's atmosphere. So once we start to enter the atmosphere, what it might be worth well what we want to do is we want to point at the retrograde marker on the nav ball. And we're also gonna fold in the solar panels because we don't want them breaking up as we descend. And then the only other thing I would normally do is I would hit the altimeter to set that to ground and then stage the drogue parachutes just so that when they hit the correct pressure they will automatically deploy So now the drogue chutes have deployed, we are going to slow the, st slow the speed down so that we don't end up going too fast. And uh, what I've done is I've set up an action group where once we reach around about a thousand meters from the ground, we are going to decouple, or we're going to um, cut the drogue chutes and deploy the main chutes. And we're also at that point going to extend the landing legs as well. Now we've deployed the main chutes. I know that once we hit 150 th uh, meters, if we go to 50% on the throttle on this particular lander, we will start to reduce our descent rate to a good level uh, because we don't want to be hitting the ground too hard in case we break the engine. Now that will depend on the weight of the lander you're using. This is quite a light lander. Uh, but as usual, um, I would personally recommend doing a few tests to see what landing works best for you or for the rocket, uh, the lander you are trying to get onto the surface. And once we touch down, we're going to cut the throttle. And there we are on the surface and we've landed in a nice flat area. Um, normally at this point we would do what's called a stay no stay check. So if it looks like it's going to tip over, then we would either take off again and find somewhere better to land or we would abort the landing. But yeah, that's us on the ground. The only other thing we really need to do is we need to make sure that the solar panels are re-extended just so that we don't end up running out of energy. And we can um, strengthen up the landing legs as well just so that when you EVA the uh, lander won't end up tipping over. So I'm just going to quickly do that. And then we will be ready for our first EVA. So yeah, that's how to get onto the surface of Duna. Now, if you are using a heavier lander, then you may need to start burning a little earlier and possibly even use more throttle. But it's always worth doing a few tests just to see what works best for the lander you're using. 
Now, in the next video, we will be taking this, or we'll be launching this lander back off of the surface of Duna. We're going to rendezvous and dock with the command module in orbit, and then we will return back to Kerbin as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.